Here's the weird stuff I love. Imagine your vision is totally normal, and then one day you see demonic features everywhere on people only, just like the... Listen to the predictive programming, my friends. Just imagine if one day, all of a sudden, you start seeing people as demons. No, they're not really demons. You just have demon face disorder or demon face syndrome. So this is an actual broadcast from a Fox affiliate, and it goes into pretty good detail on the disorder, and he actually interviews a psychiatrist as well. And then stitched in after that is a PhD student who breaks down the uh, medical paper that was written on this disorder. Um, the pictures that are on the screen right now, they actually come from the tests that they ran um, for the paper. So it goes into um, the case studies and this is their digital representation of what the demons look like to the patients. So I'm going to try and keep my commentary short on this and I have to watch what I say on these videos to keep them up. But let's go ahead and play it. This, what you see behind me. Now that's a reality for a man named Victor Shera. He has extremely rare yet terrifying disorder called PMO. And no, it's commonly known as, or now known because people didn't know about it at first. It's called the demon face syndrome. Pe Did you hear that? People didn't know about it at first. And that's why we've never heard of such a thing. People just didn't know about it. But with the condition, see parts of other people's faces distorted in shape, texture, position, or color. For Shara, that means grotesque, grimace, elongated eyes, and deeply etched scars, also pointed ears. There are 75 known cases of the disorder. My next guest, well, we talk about it, and he is kind of skeptical, but he says there is some proof. And joining us now here on the Factor Uncensored, we have with us Dr. Nick Hardy. Dr. Nick, you know, I'm always looking for the weird and the different, and I think I found it today. And this condition, we're told, is called demon face syndrome. Now, it's when an individual sees someone and their face seems distorted, almost satanic, demon-like. Have you ever heard of such a thing? I have it. And to your point, when I saw that only 75 cases have been reported, I said, oh, we, we really looked high and low to find this one. But <laughs> I have not heard of this one before. Doesn't mean that it's not valid. Doesn't mean that it's not real. I just haven't heard. This is the first time that I've heard about this, this uh, disorder. And 75 cases in a world of what? Uh, billions of people. That's pretty low, right? It is. It's extremely low. And, and truthfully, I need to look and see what the threshold is for it even comes up on people's radar, at least from a medical perspective. But I'll say this, you know, they say 75 reported. That means that there could be more people, but just out of fear of, you know, embarrassment or what does this look like? What do people think? I mean, am I crazy? Did I, you know, eat something bad? Is this temporary? I mean, just all the thoughts and feelings that come along with, you know, this how, are they, how are they describing this so-called demon face syndrome? What, what is it exactly from what you've been able to ascertain? Yeah, so what I've seen is basically this is a disorder that when people look at others, there's this distorted view that creates a demon, demon like. Note how the hallucinations or distortions don't take place on anything except for the people. So generally when you're having hallucinations, it's going to distort the background, cats, dogs, more than just people's face. So I think that's interesting. Um, and maybe points to the fact that I could be something else so, at play. You know, some of their eyes may kind of spread out. There may be distortions on their skin. 
And this only happens when they're looking at people. I don't think that they said that they saw the same imagery when they looked at a sheet of paper. And so it's happening in real time, according to some of these uh, reports. And I think they examined and they used in one of the case studies a Tennessee truck, truck driver who said he began seeing people's faces uh, and they looked like demons back in 2020. And I've, uh, the term schizophrenia has been tossed around. Where does that fit in? I, I, it, it doesn't fit in here because in this situation, uh, this is just visual distortion, whereas with schizophrenia, a lot of times people have delusional thoughts and beliefs. And so they may see it, but then there's a narrative that goes along with it that you know creates a story around what could be happening, some hallucination. This is just... I just seeing things that, that don't look normal. Mm -hmm. uh, so totally different than schizophrenia. Wow. <laughs> it's yeah. kind of like, I don't even know what to do with this, but I'm so interested in it. If people are actually seeing others who look like demons just visually, because yeah. that could, that could lead to some mental issues. If you oh. think people are demons around you, you know, that would affect your brain. Oh, 100%. I mean, even just how you respond to someone that is your roommate versus a demon that's coming in your room. Right. Totally, totally different. But I'll say this, you know, when I was reading about this, one of the things that I do think from a mental health perspective that we have to be careful of is even labeling it demon could mm -hmm. push people away who could be suffering from this disorder. Uh, and I think this has been the case with a lot of mental health disorders over the history of, of what we've have come to learn about mental health. You know, we used to call it mental retardation, you know, like, I mean, all these derogatory terms that we're fighting some of those stigmas now, uh, just in the mental health space. So I think even though it's early, not a lot of people have it, we, we still have to be careful how we describe it. Do you put a lot of credibility in it, though? Do you think they know what they're talking about, not the people, but those who may be studying the people who may be buying into this. Yeah, I, I put a little, I do put some credibility into it. I mean, because when I looked at the study, I mean, there was some merit in how they went about kind of verifying this. But I will say initially, I was like, oh, here we go again. We, we, we're just making up stuff now. <laughs> but it, it came from a credible source and that they did name that, you know, hey, this is still very early, only 75 cases reported. And so it's, it's, it's not common. I think there's probably more research and more studies that need to, to be done. But I think if there's a, 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 a immediate uh, influx of people who say now that they have this disorder, I think that it could, it could raise some questions or some concerns about the validity of everything. So we'll see. Absolutely. We will see, Dr. Nick Hardy. Thank you for joining me and indulging me in my weirdness. Okay, so this is the case study. <clears throat> and uh, I snap I grabbed this off another YouTube channel, which I will credit at the top here in text. So here we go with the explanation of the medical paper and case study. Hi, my name is Antonio Mello, and I'm a PhD student at Dartmouth College, and I would like to present the case of a 58-year-old man who reported seeing people's faces as distorted for the past three years. Every face he encountered in daily life appeared, in his words, demonic, with severely stretched facial features and deep grooves on different parts of the face. However, he did not perceive distortions on other objects or on faces on screens or on paper. Our initial assessment did not reveal obvious signs of cognitive or visual impairments. T1 and T2 MRI scans showed a round lesion measuring about one centimeter in the left hippocampus. The impression here was of an arachnoid cyst, but it's unclear if this cyst contributes to the distortions since the hippocampus is not part of the face processing network. In previous studies, it has not been possible for patients to accurately judge if an illustration of their distortions matches what they see because the illustration itself also depicts a face, so the patients will see distortions on it too. However, as I mentioned before, this patient does not see distortions on faces presented on screens. This unusual feature provided us with an opportunity to visualize what he sees using the following procedure. First, we took a photo of a person's face in a closed room. 
Then we projected this photo on a computer screen and asked the person to stay in the room. Next, the patient entered the room and we asked him to look at the face of the person in front of him and compare it to the photo on the screen. As he alternated between observing the face in front of him and that same face on the screen, he provided real-time feedback on their differences, which we used to modify the photo until it matched his perception. As you can see in the visualizations, the eyes, nose, mouth, and ears are severely stretched, and deep roots affect the forehead, cheeks, and chin. These distortions follow the face through different points of view and are remarkably consistent across different identities, affecting the same facial features regardless of the face he sees. This is a case of prosopal metamorphosia, or PMO, a rare neurological disorder of visual perception in which faces appear distorted while other visual categories often do not. We believe that visualizations of face distortions are critical to understanding PMO. They not only demonstrate the severity of this condition, but also emphasize the need for effective treatments. This case allows us to glimpse the world through the eyes of someone with PMO for the first time. So there you have it, guys. What do you think? What are they preparing us for? Let me know in the comments.